revelations.unveil.detroit. All praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly, holy, almighty creator of infinity, eternity, the universe, and all there is. This is revelations.unveil.detroit. Hello, family. We're back together again in our wonderful congregation, the 12 tribes of the house of Jacob scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth and we are coming back to the remembrance of our true identity our true power our true mission the prophecy and the kingdom all praises and today family once again as we converge in our zone of wonderfulness warmth love safety and comfort we are once again with our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears examining the carnal consequences of our walk on this continent of confusion, otherwise known as Babylon, United States of America. And today we are looking at an article regarding practices of anti-so-called black racism while traveling. And so, as we know throughout the span of this social media, uh, new black independent media campaign and association, which is coming together and fortifying, we know that as a so-called African-American and black person here, in the United States, our utter and very existence is hampered, is censored, is put upon. It is examined and scrutinized as if we are lab animals or rats. Otherwise, it could be characterized as, as a people we are in a fishbowl called America where all eyes watch as we swim around for their entertainment, amusement, scientific study, etc. And so we know that we can't drive while black, barbecue while black, sell water while black, banking while black, anything or activity across normal human communities we have the most problems we have the problems hardest problems it is not like we can have a clean exchange a pleasurable inter encounter a wonderful enterprise of peace and harmony where we can genuinely love everyone and so we are, as the 12 tribes of Jacob and our spiritual understanding, processing through the curses put upon us as a nation of Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. So when we examine those curses, then we know that we must then continue to fortify in the laws of our holy power all praises. And so today we are examining a article from The Root entitled Three Border Patrol Officers File Lawsuit Against CBP, that's the Canadian Border uh, Patrol family, alleging constant racism or racial profiling and harassment of black travelers. So now this goes into the continuous episodes or continuous examples of anti-Black activity and sentiment and institutions 
against us as a people. And so we will go through this article and get an expanse of the example of us traveling. And this particular article, it's right close to home for us here at revelations.unveil.detroit who are actually less than seven miles from the uh, Ambassador Bridge Canadian border crossing. We can look right over uh, beyond the river and there is Canada. So for us, it is a direct application of something that we, when we travel right across the way that we experience daily. And so let's find out the particulars of this article. And we begin. Apparently, there is no place in America a black person can go without experiencing racism, not even to the Canadian border. Three black custom and border protection officers have filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court alleging that CBP officers commonly target black travelers for racial profiling and harassment and that the few black officers working customs at the border crossing between Port Huron, Michigan and Sarnia, Canada are being put in positions where they have to engage in the racist practices themselves. So we see family, we are always hired, engaged, initiated or instigated within these jobs, institutions, and general society to participate in the anti-Black practices against ourselves and our own people. The Detroit Free Press reports that out of 275 CBP officers that work at the Michigan-Canada location, only four are Black. And like most predominantly white environments, some workers of color feel that racism is embedded in the very culture of their workplace. So as the new black media, we shun that word workers of color. We specifically are speaking of so-called black people. From the Detroit Free Press, the Michigan lawsuit highlights what some immigration and civil rights advocates describe as a pervasive and unchecked problem of racial profiling at CBP, an agency they say has been steeped in institutional racism for decades. Similar racial profiling lawsuits have been filed over the years in Montana, Virginia, Texas, Washington, Ohio, and Maine, though, CBP has routinely denied culpability and avoided repercussions. So right there, family, we see this is not an isolated incident for us here in Michigan. This is across many states in the country. There have been many suits and the agency has denied any culpability of action and have not suffered any repercussions or punishments whatsoever. Nationwide, black people account for less than 6% of the total CBP workforce of 21,185. More than 62% of employees are white. Another 25% are Hispanic. The CBP could not be, or the CBP could not provide data on how many minorities versus white travelers are pulled over for secondary inspections at border crossings or how many are detained. So there is no live capture of information to determine along ethnic lines who is detained at these border crossings and um, the relationship between minorities and white. And so the data, well, no. but in March 25th, the American Civil Liberties Union of Michigan published the findings from thousands of documents involving Border Patrol arrests, CBP released last year after a five-year legal battle. The data 
spanning nine years and including records of more than 13,000 stops, revealed that more than 95% of those arrested by Border Patrol in Michigan are people of color. So 13,000 cases, 95% represent people of color. And so we are speaking specifically of black, and that also would include Hispanics and whatever they determine to be people of color. We are speaking black. So surprisingly to nobody black, the statistics surrounding who gets arrested at the border are pretty much par for the course of what goes on in policing in America in general. Yes, it is. I think the more interesting thing about this story is that black border patrol officers are alleging in their suit that they are being forced to racially profile travelers themselves. The Free Press reported that black custom officer, Johnny Grays, one of the plaintiffs in the suit, once pulled his gun on a black driver while his children who were in the car screamed from the back seat, don't shoot my daddy. This reportedly happened because the driver failed to turn his engine off, roll down his window and show his hands on command. Instead, the driver fumbled around looking for his key fob, which apparently made officers fear he was armed. Gray's alleges in the suit that the common practice of racial profiling at the border not only demeans and humiliates black travelers, but on that day, it put both himself and the innocent black family in harm's way. The truth is racial profiling in America happens commonly everywhere black people and people of color exist. And it always puts us in harm's way, always. Okay, so. That was our example, family, of traveling while black. We have official border patrol officers who have filed suit and are giving documented instances and practices of this agency of the Canadian border. And so when we cross, and we follow the protocol, not only must we be robotic and uh, uh, attentive, we have an air of fear for anything they may determine investigate us for. So it is a non-winning situation for a people. And so we must ask, what is the cyclical toll and impact of this? This is traveling while black. What about banking while black? Taking a nap while black? Searching for a home while black? Looking for a job while black? Doing your job while black? Running for political party and canvassing the neighbor, neighborhood while black? Bird watching while black? What is it that we can do in America with comfort being black without the psychological ghost above our head that when we encounter any other nation or community or ethnicity of people or engage in any institution or shopping or walking around in America, we must always be on guard. So family, for those of us who are still accumulating the knowledge of our true identity, being on guard means you are in a war. The war is constant. Why is the world warring against you? And I simply submit family, we continue to review the book of Psalms, chapter 83. We are the children of Israel, scattered 
into the four corners of the earth for the disobedience of our forefathers. And as a consequence, these articles are a example to you in the spiritual realm of who and who you and we really and truly are. So family, the article information will be in the banners or in the uh, description. If you are so inclined, please review the banners of support and love. And as these continuous examples of the carnal activity are exposed to us, we will come together and review them in the spiritual sense for our continuing journey as we endure and persevere until we overcome to the kingdom. All praises. And so, as you know, until we are together again, I love you. I love you. I love you. This is Revelations. Unveiled. Detroit. So we're going to take it home with a little music family. I hope you enjoy. And until we are together again.
revelations.unveil.detroit